Hi, so in our last video we extracted the movement of the tank from the tank controller which is actually our player tank controller so the one the player controls the player moves and extracted two different components that we can now reuse in different tank controllers so, so we have an AI con uh, tank controller that the AI tank controller could use the same uh, tank movement controller as the player which you know helps when you're trying to get the AI to behave like the player and also uh, allows us to reuse code which is always a good thing so in this video what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be extracting the shooting and aiming, com aiming part of the tank controller to different components with the same aim so as you can see the tank aims where the mouse is so our mouse guides the tank to it um, and then when you press the fire button, which in this case is either the mouse, left mouse button or the control, and it shoots at the maximum rate. Okay? So this is fine. Um okay. this is already implemented. Um so let's now extract the code and create a new component that takes care of that. Let's see subscript, it's gonna be tank. Shooting controller. Uh, shoot and shoot. Uh, fire the controller. Yeah, I think fire the controller. Shooting controller should be okay. Yeah. Shoot and I like shooting. Anyways, so we have created a new component. I like to create. Uh, what I got a um, template for my uh, my behaviors to have by default these regions public attributes, private attributes, etc. Um, properties, my behavior methods which include a start and, and a date and the methods. The rest are empty. So this uh, uh, this component the aiming of the tank and, uh, and the, sh the aiming and the shipping this one is not going to be taking care of aiming where the mouse is where the mouse is is a um, question that we have to solve in the tank controller because that's something that is very um, that is present, uh, that is very much related to the how the player controls the tank. But, uh, and it, it basically generates a 3D point that, you, that we can use. And that's the point, that, that, that's the thing that we're going to be using to aim the tank. So we're going to give it a 3D point that is going to be the aim, right? And then we're going to give it a, um, and we're going to give it a, a boolean, and then whether we want to shoot or not. So that's definitely things that we're going to need here. It's going to be um, a vector 3 target point, maybe. <coughs> and the point is going to be you know, 0, 0, whatever. So, points. Again, as we did before, we're going to use properties to access these private variables because that way, uh, you keep the variables private uh, because you don't want them exposed to the user to, you know, as if, as if they were um, some number that, you, that the user has to tweak. And you still can access them as if they were variables from the, from other components in the code. So, you know, using properties gives you that. that those getters and setters, but in a, in a very convenient and easy to use way. Oh. One could argue that we could use auto, I don't know what is this exact name, like auto fill properties or auto properties, whatever, the ones where you just could get and set with a semicolon, that's it. Or even we could use the new nomenclature where we use a uh, um, like 
this. Oh, I don't particularly like that. Um, I will be explaining why in a different, different time. It's mostly a personal preference, so it's, I'm fine with you using them. But, you know, particularly for Unity, having auto uh, auto properties kind of, kind of annoys me because with a um, with a variable you can give it a default value and it's going to be set when the class is created so it's a constructor so to speak while you cannot use constructors so when you have a property you cannot give it a default value easily you need to keep it in the constructor but we cannot use constructors in the in, uh, in, in modern behaviors. They're not good practice. I think they're forbidden. I'm not sure if they're actually forbidden or not. The thing is, you don't want to use them. Uh, instead, you have the awake and the, and the unenable and the start. But these definitely happen after the class is created, after the constructor. And I kind of don't like to have things that are initialized by default when I want them to have different values. I mean, yes, you kind of control the order in which things are executed, but usually you'll have an unenable before you start of your awake. And I don't know, I mean, you can just forget. Maybe you use uh, the awake to give it the full values, and that's alright. Then at some point you decide you when you enable these or whatever, you have to do some checks. And then all of a sudden you're just checking these before it's been assigned the full value, which may have a then have the default value of the vector tree, which is not the right one that you want for it to have at the start. And then, you know, you have a bug there that you could just avoid this writing a couple of lines of code. Also, when you're accessing the get of the set of a uh, property, you're actually using a function. So that means that you're actually calling functions inside your code when you just want to access a class variable. I know you, these dispensers get optimized later, and the, um, the, the, the CPU cost is either known or negligible. But I don't know, I come, I'm, I'm a bit old school, and you know, I'm just, I've been a professional C++ programmer for a long time, and this is the kind of thing that, you know, it, uh, the, the compiler would not optimize in the back mode. And, you know, if you can help your code run faster in the bus mode, it's going to be good for you and your code. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I know it's not a big optimization. I know it's n there are not really strong reasons not to use the auto properties, but you know, there are my reasons, and this, this, is, this is why you will see me using this sort of. Um, uh, I'm actually quite annoyed when um, they are like this. Like, uh, yeah, this when they when uh, Microsoft suggests that you use auto property, but I don't want to. I, I know I can do it. I just don't want to. Anyway, we have them already initialized, and we have our new properties. The things are gonna tell uh, tell this component whether what where to aim and whether to shoot or not. Cool. So let's see. Let's start moving more code from this one to uh, from the tank controller to the um, to the tank shooting controller. So we definitely won't need the bullet, the bullet speed, the reload time, the shoot angle, where the muscle is, the horizontal speed. I don't know what this is used for, what the function was. That is not being used. So, uh, that's it. So, not the camera, because the camera is something that we use to um, calculate the 3D point corresponding to the 3D point of the mouse. Um, we need, we're going to need a timer because. That's what we're going to be using to 
make sure we cannot shoot too often so we have a reload time we respect it using the timer and that's about it so yeah we're gonna set we're gonna add a private tank shooting controller shooting system and we initialize it here Shoot is going to be whether we want to shoot or also we press the button or not. That's, that's just as simple as that. And the aiming point, yeah, here, Kevin, the turret, and uh, so. Okay, we cannot change this method. So I'm gonna be doing this. I'm gonna be redoing this method completely. I will do it later. But we want these to be part of the new method, and we cannot move them. And this is going part of the new method, too. the new component. Sorry. So. method, this shoot method, we definitely want to move to our new component. Here we go, we have the shoot method. It's going to be private, at least for the time being. We, um, I'm not sure we need, this is the bullet, uh, we can call it bullet free. I'm not sure we want we have these, but those two things are things that we can um, remove because they're part of the um, um, uh, part of the part of the public variables that we are defining. So why is it? Oh, that's right, we already have a location for shoot. So, fire. Here we call fire shell. Ah, uh, let's do it in fire. Okay. So, this basically uh, creates a, um, sorry, instantiates a prefab, which is something we should probably avoid, and I'll explain it in a different video how to do it using pools. Puts it, puts it in a muscle position, so it's uh, new bullet, place it position and rotation. Just the muscle position rotation, the bullet controller, and in it it's the initial velocity. Orientation of that. So we have shoot angle so that our our bullets are shot and shot uh, at a certain angle with the with the ground. And yeah, we can get with that initial velocity and, and uh, we can muscle forward and then uh, in, in and the angles uh, angle sine and cosine. And then we set the initial velocity in the, in the bullet controller. Good. So, um, we have the shooting part. We need to increase the timer. And uh, we need to aim the turret. We're going 
create a, um, a new method for this too. We're going to have to limit it to the exit plane. Yeah, first we're going to limit it, and then we're going to take this one. still aiming in the same direction. We just change 
the uh, orientation in the um, in the c axis so the rotation in the c axis and that is going to um but that's not going to change the, the direction it's aiming so if you see c is aiming in that direction c is aiming in the same direction c is aiming in the same direction in order to keep and what we want what we want to do is to make sure that these well, I axis is always looking upwards. That's why we use the look at. So we said that point, the point you have to, to look at and the up direction. So, uh, so it's always looking in that point, but with the right one. In this case, it's going to work anyway because you use the previous um, up direction and, and to, to calculate the new one. And you know it's. And since we are always aiming in the same XC plane, it's not gonna. Uh, it, it would work perfectly with the forward. But still, I think it's a good uh, practice to. It's a good idea to keep, uh, or it's a good practice to use look at instead of forward, unless you know really what you're doing, and there's a good reason for you to use forward. So now we have the aim already. We have the the fire. Cool. It looks like it is working. Uh, sorry, this is done there. We need. Um, oh no, we need to aim. Well, before we be aiming, let's um, let's see if it works at least. So right now it's just. Well, it's not working obviously because we haven't added the uh, the component. Obviously, we need to add the component, and we're gonna do it to the player tank, to the prefab shooting component, so the bullet prefab is this one, the tank turret is this one, and the tank muscle is this one. Cool. So now, oops, doesn't seem to be working very well. Yeah, it's not working. Let's see what's happening. Oh, that's right. <sighs> yeah, pull that velocity for starters should be bigger than that. Let's set it to 10, for instance. And the reload time should be bigger than that too. So let's put it up to 0.5. That's a problem with not having default values that are meaningful. What was happening before? Bullets were staying where they were, so they had no velocity, and they uh, had no load time, so they were colliding with each other. That is something that we may want to avoid too. It's always aiming towards a point. Okay, uh, in the center, which is you know fair enough. And um, for the controller, I think we may want to adjust the gravity because I think the gravity of the bullet is a little bit too low, and that's why it's not. So yeah, duration explosion. What is the um, gravity and what is the gravity of the sign? Is the sign is a private, it shouldn't be private, please. To the public. If anything, this is public. And we're gonna put it something more like that. Yeah. Uh no. Three please, thank you very much. Let's see what happens now. Did you see the uh, tank is always aiming towards the center of the screen. Okay. 
I think this is getting a bit too long, so I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna go on explaining how to uh, do the aiming in the next video. Okay? I'm gonna be doing that, and then in the next video we will also uh, change the aiming of the turret so that it has an angle, maximum angular velocity, and that way you have you, you cannot rotate the turret too quickly. That's gonna be useful, particularly when we um <coughs> for for when we try to to have the AI because the AI can very easily aim in the exactly the right direction and with these we are gonna make them a little bit less uh, we can we change the, the velocity as, uh, which they can change and make them less uh, uh, good at the game anyway see you in the next video thanks